Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Stephanie Michaud, and uh, I'm here representing NSERC. My regular day job, though, is at the NCE, uh, but I won't be speaking to that program at all today. I'm wearing my NSERC hat only. So thank you very much for the invitation, Lisa, to participate at this event. Um, I, KT, KMB, knowledge mobilization is really not part of the lexicon of, of NSERC and is something that I shared with, uh, with Lisa when she first invited me to participate um, at this event. However, um, it is done and, if, um, and, and, and shares a lot with, with uh, the end of Grand KT that's carried out and, and titled as such at CIHR as well as Integrated KT. So I just want to walk you through, um, well, first of all, how many folks here in the room receive their granting from NSERC? Okay, that's great. Um, how many, and uh, can I ask, are you predominantly funded through the Discovery Grant Program? Yes, any partnership grants? No, 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 okay, great, thank you very much. Um, so seeing that the vast majority of you are, uh, are not funded by NSERC, I thought, I guessed as much, and uh, I thought I'd walk you through um, how the council funding is subdivided. Um, so this is a slightly older slide. You'll see new presentations from NSERC that we are now focusing on the division of funding, uh, discovery, and innovation. But here it's still framed as people, discovery, and innovation, and demonstrating the different amounts of investment uh, in, in each. Overall, NSERC has a budget of approximately $1 billion, uh, very close to the amount of funding uh, that is obtained by CIHR. Around 30% of that goes to uh, what is termed the innovation portion of, um, of programming. And those programs very much target partnerships. And uh, as the name implies, partnerships is you need to have a partner in order to apply to the grant. The remainder of the budget is subdivided uh, with discovery grants and, um, and scholarships and fellowships. But as I mentioned earlier, this has all been rolled up into a single envelope now. And here are the budget figures. So you can see there's been um, um, you know, a gradual increase over the years going back uh, to 2005. Uh, and we've leveled off at approximately $1 billion of total investment per year. So in preparing for this talk, of course, uh, psychology uh, is, is not front and center, certainly not where I'm currently sitting, uh, which is the Environment, Energy, uh, and Resources Division of the Research Partnerships Programs at NSERC. I basically don't get to interact with, uh, with any one of you. Uh, which caused me to, to go back to the documentation of the granting agency to see uh, what kind of research uh, NSERC is actually allowed via its act to fund uh, in the field of psychology. And what you have here on this slide behind me is a list of eligible, what is considered to be eligible subject matter um, at NSERC in the field of, uh, of psychology. And you have these listed here. I also want to know a little bit more about you, so um, I carried out a little bit of a search with respect to the kind of funding uh, that is obtained by the folks that are eligible to be funded uh, by NSERC. And as you can see here from the data, it's predominantly in discovery grants, um, although um, there is uh, a showing in the CREATE grant, which is focused on providing interdisciplinary training for highly qualified personnel. Um, I, was, I was really uh, encouraged by the number of engage, and uh, also that you're, there is representation uh, in the partnership space as an industrial research chair, which funds a program of research in partnership uh, with an industry partner, as well as a CRD, which stands for a Collaborative Research and Development Grant, also funding, it's project-based funding essentially, um, in partnership with, uh, with an industry partner. I don't have any titles to provide you, though. My search was not that thorough. Um, so giving you a little bit of, a, of an overview, an aperçu, uh, and, and please, if, if anybody in the audience would like me to switch uh, to French or to, to repeat my statements in French, just please put your hand up, and I'm happy to do so. Um, this here is, uh, is the, you know, the discovery to innovation continuum of what is funded at the Natural Sciences and Engineering. And on, uh, in the lower corner, on your left-hand side, is uh, the Discovery Grants Program, which is predominantly where NSERC is funding members from this community here. And moving right along from left to right, 
uh, and going up on the vertical scale is where you see the different partnership opportunities um, that are offered by, by NSERC. Uh, basically, from the middle of the slide on, um, these are all grant types that involve some kind of partnership commitment and depending on the grant type would require a different amount of financial and or in-kind contribution from the partner. So what does KMB look like at NSERC? We certainly don't call it that. And the, the way to convey what KMB and or KT knowledge translation looks like at NSERC uh, and really target it for, for the members of this audience here was to look at the evaluation criteria and to look predominantly at, of course, the program offerings of the Council, uh, but also predominantly where um, this community is currently being funded. And so it's going to be in the discovery and in the innovation envelope. So the merit indicators for uh, the uh, discovery grants, and these fund uh, their five-year grants um, that fund a program of research and fund a single re researcher. Um, I've listed here some of the qualifications of the merit indicators used to evaluate a discovery grant, and there are only three um, uh, selection criteria or merit indicators, and that is the excellence of the researcher, the merit of the proposal, and the training of HQP. Um, there really is no expectation of a formal knowledge mobilization or KT plan other than what you as researchers would be doing already. That is publishing your work, um, speaking at conferences, um, in those conferences and in those publications that are relevant to you. And the KT is really about you informing your peers and, and demonstrating your accomplishments via those vehicles. There is, in more recent years, the Discovery Frontiers program, which I've abbreviated as DF, which is a project grant. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that the emphasis here is really on, on publishing in, in the um, publications that are, that are relevant to your field. And the only instruction provided with respect to knowledge mobilization or knowledge translation is that you disseminate the knowledge in the most appropriate uh, way uh, according to the call uh, that you're responding to. So very much uh, if I was going to use CIHR's terminology, end of grant, KT. So we move to uh, the innovation programs, and these are the partnership programs. And so here, the starting point in all of the research partnership programs, as the name of the division implies, is that there's a partner present. And I've included here a quote uh, from the literature of the strategic grants program, which is, which is that uh, the whole point of the project is to enable the transfer of knowledge, technology, and expertise to Canadian-based companies that are well positioned to apply the results for economic gain or to a government organization to strengthen public policy. And I'll have some examples of that at the very end of the talk. But really the starting point here, um, and, and you could call this, and again, if I was going to use CIHR's nomenclature, IKT, integrated KT, the expectation is very much that the problem that you're trying to solve is relevant uh, to the partner that's present, that is contributing. That partner is, uh, is engaged and will continue to be engaged for the duration of the grant and has very much been a participant in elaborating what the grant application looks like. So again, um, there is, a, and, it, and I've carefully gone through the literature uh, at NSERC, I, I, I assumed as much, but uh, there is no, uh, no mention of KT specifically, no mention of KMB uh, specifically, so it's really attained, and it's simply because they're not using the terminology, but it's attained in other ways, and it's evaluated in other ways, and what they're really looking for, and I've italicized um, those uh, portions of the evaluation criteria that speak to knowledge translation, knowledge mobilization, is the training potential, the interactions with supporting organizations, and the whole concept of benefit to Canada. And so I'd just like to spend a little bit of time on these. Um, yeah. So 
I didn't add any text with respect to training um, because the observation from NSERC is that, and I think uh, most of my fellow funders would agree, an enormous amount of KT when they're working on a grant with different partners uh, takes place via the highly qualified personnel that are actually working on the project, spending time um, at the partner's site, either uh, an industry lab or a government lab. And that's an important mechanism for the kind of knowledge exchange uh, between the academic setting and, uh, and the end user setting. Um, these here are, are general evaluation criteria for the partnership programs at NSERC um, and, and well developing these sections of the application uh, will go a long way to um, securing uh, a positive decision re uh, relative to your application. Uh, with respect to, and this is all with an eye to uh, focusing in on KT and KMB in the context of these partnership grants. Um, I can't tell you the number of times at NSERC that applications are received. Uh, the partner letter is what is termed in funder language a love letter. Uh, it really doesn't mean anything. The partner is not really engaged. And so in order to assess whether or not there's true collaboration, NSERC does spend some time in instructing its committees into what to look for with respect to the interactions with partners. And I've highlighted in red here on this slide uh, the types of of, um, of uh, descriptions that they're looking for. So first of all, is the, is the partner the appropriate one uh, to realize the impact of the grant? Um, how will the technology and knowledge be transferred? What are going to be your mechanisms uh, to do this? Will there be workshops? Uh, just having one meeting over the course of a three-year grant is obviously insufficient. What they would like to see is HQP spending time at the partner site, um, there being exchange between uh, the industry partner or government partner, spending time at the academic lab so that there's a true sense of an exchange going on, uh, that you've elaborated what the community communications is going to look like, uh, that you'll have workshops, et cetera. They're looking for true engagement. Uh, they're also looking at what's termed capacity of the partner. So is uh, the industry partner just a numbered company, or do they have staff that is going to be able to take up and utilize uh, the results? That's also very important to communicate. And again, obviously, the degree of involvement that can be denoted with respect to the different types of interaction activities that would be carried out. Benefits to Canada. Um, I have to say, um, I've been with the granting agencies now for about 10 years. Uh, this section of a grant application in, in NCE in, uh, at NSERC is one of the toughest sections for applicants uh, to complete. It's very hard to, uh, for folks to sit down and convey what will be the benefit to Canada for a proposed application, a proposed network grant. Uh, with respect to NSERC, and always keeping my NSERC hat on here, it's how will it benefit the supporting organization? Remember that these are partnership grants, and so part of the benefit to Canada will be achieved as a result of how it's going to benefit a Canadian organization. NSERC is very strict, by the way, in terms of limiting uh, input or involvement from international partners on files. They're allowed, but the expectation is that a Canadian company is also present because they're looking for uh, that benefit to Canada. And again, you can really knock it out of the park by elaborating, actually spending some real time on the benefit to, to Canada question. What does a strong partner look like? Um, if you are able to convey that your partner has been involved from the get-go in, in defining what this project uh, is about, I would say that you're ahead of 80% of, uh, of the applicants that are submitting grants. Um, there are very clear expectations, clear identification of milestones, deliverables, um, you know, evidence of, of good lines of communications between the academic team and the partner. And again, this plan for ongoing interaction. How are you going to be sharing the results of the research with the partner? So, um, I, and we have David Phipps here, who uh, is uh, Mr. Knowledge Mobilization in Canada. And, um, and, and, and you'll be hearing from Renee very soon, uh, who will be speaking on behalf of the Networks of Centers of Excellence. But, uh, and, and you'll hear these terms being used today 
And to me, this sounds a lot like the concept of co-creation, of sitting down with your partner to find out together what it is that you're going to be uh, working on, what are their needs, and, and what do they need from you. Communication planning. You just can't initiate these kinds of projects without fleshing out how the interaction will be taking place over uh, at the number of years that your project is funded. And finally, very clear definition of, uh, of the challenge that you wish to address and the plan, how you're going to do it. And of course, the anticipated impact, which links in very well to the whole benefit to Canada. So I've included here um, some examples of success stories. And I apologize in advance. I, I, I did not find any success stories in partnerships uh, for, um, for the folks uh, in the discipline of, of psychology. But I do have two success stories here in the Strategic Network Grants Program. This program um, funds a network approach to addressing a challenge with a five to ten year window to application. There is no cash commitment required of the partner. It is a significant grant. It funds one million dollars a year for five years. Uh, trains students um, and, and is really looking to and, and is of course it, it is also limited by, by different target areas but I thought I would involve or, or demonstrate um, some of the success stories that have been achieved one in terms of policy and one in terms of industry relevance to an industry partner and this here the way that this uh, acronym is uh, pronounced is just like it reads it's called CASIN and it stands for it stands for uh, Canadian Aquatic Invasive Species Network, and their partners in this case were Transport Canada and DFO. And through the work of Kaysen, um, the um, they've changed. They've actually changed regu uh, re regulatory requirements for um, how ballasts in ships are maintained uh, in terms of the introduction of invasive species in the St. Lawrence uh, Seaway. This was an international collaboration because as you can imagine, the Seaway is shared by both uh, Canada and the United States. This has very far-ranging um, implications and both uh, Transport Canada and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans carried out um, an impact analysis uh, demonstrating that the, the regulatory change um, as a result of the research that was funded through CASEN um, has, um, you know, is worth tens of millions of dollars with respect to avoiding uh, mitigation of having to deal with invasive species being introduced in uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway. The last example here that I have for you is um, a magnet and um, very interesting, so this reminds me of course of my early days at NSERC because I was actually the person who evaluated this network. Uh, and so it's come back after, after a few years. And so Magnet was looking to lower the overall weight of vehicles by using uh, magnesium, introducing magnesium into the fabrication of car parts. So I don't know if you folks remember your high school chemistry. Uh, but magnesium was that strip of metal that your chemistry teacher, at least my chemistry teacher, but I also played with mercury in my bare head, so I had a very unusual <laughs> chemistry teacher. Um, it was the strip of, of metal that they would light up and would give a very, very bright uh, white light that was absolutely blinding and you'd see spots for at least two minutes afterwards. You weren't really supposed to look at it, but we're all 16 years old, of course we're going to look at it. Um, and so it's a very unstable metal, and so the approach of this network, and it was a network approach, was looking at metallurgy, uh, looking at different uh, theoretical uh, modeling of these alloys, and really trying to figure out a way of how magnesium could be um, uh, incorporated into uh, an industry process in order to, um, to, to use this material in, um, in car parts to reduce the weight of the car and therefore reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And over the course of five years, um, you know, I have to be honest, you evaluate these things and, and I, I'm a chemist by training, I know how, how tough it is to work with this metal and I thought, well, this will be an incredible accomplishment if they do this, but, um, you know, they're really reaching for the stars. Well, they delivered. Um, they were working with GM and actually produced um, an inside door panel composed of, um, composed of aluminum. And part of a gift um, that they provided to, uh, to the PI who was responsible for this network uh, were, um, uh, paper, were paper holders uh, that was stainless steel, iron, and of course magnesium. 
and well, if there was the slightest gust of wind, right, the magnesium piece would have uh, would have been blown away. Whereas the iron and the stainless steel, of course, would have been, uh, uh, you know, effective paperweights. Um, so these are just some examples of, of the kinds of, of projects that are currently being funded at NSERC. As you can see, you know, Kaysen, Magnet, um, you know, it's obvious that the results are very relevant uh, to the partners that are participating and demonstrate uh, a really tight teamwork. Um, and again, speaking to that whole concept of, of co-creation and really defining together, working together um, on uh, what the um, expected impacts are going to be in terms of developing, uh, developing a plan. So uh, this is uh, my presentation with respect to NSERC. I just thought I'd include this slide because uh, it's, a, it's a picture of the Amundsen and uh, I thought it was a great picture. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and happy to answer any questions you may have.